Hey, good morning. Pete, North Las Vegas. We're back up here in the high desert. And we're going to do some, some more target shooting. This is what we'll be shooting today. But first things first, uh, we got to do a weather report. It's probably mid 30s, wind gusts up to about two miles an hour. So that could uh, introduce a little bit more challenge on today's uh, accuracy. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Okay, so you'll notice that we have gray furniture and we have a gray bag. That is no accident. Okay, so we'll go over uh, both these rifles. Um, they are pretty much um, identical except for three things. And uh, as we talk about the rifles, I'll get more into the differences. Um, the first difference is this is a 16 inch barrel and this is an 18 inch barrel. Um, these are both Criterion barrels, they're hybrids and they fall somewhere between like a medium contour and a heavy barrel. They're also one and eight twist wild chambered and both of them are at rifle length gas systems. So you can see the, the gas block is way out here on the end of the barrel on the 16 inch. And uh, some people want to think that this location may cause some function problems with the rifle. And um, I did have some issues with the rifle and we're going to find out today if I still have them. But I don't believe it had anything to do with the gas gas block location I think Criterion pretty much knows what they're doing and how to size a, a gas port properly depending on where they they put it so like I said we'll get into that here in just a minute but we'll talk some more about the the rifles themselves and the differences so I'm running VG6 Precision Epsilons these are a combination muzzle device they break they compensate and they're supposed to reduce the flash signature um, my understanding is that maybe the flash signature part doesn't work as good as it could, not like a standard uh, birdcage. Um, but the braking and the compensation does work very well on these. So um, also the, one of the differences between this, this raffle here besides the barrel length is on the 16 inch I'm using standard fold down uh, sights and on the 18 inch I'm using offsets. And my thinking was for that is because I'm running an aim point, which is the uh, the next difference, and I'm running an LPVO, a Steiner on this one, the idea was to run standard uh, fold down sights so that I could co-witness through the red dot if I wanted to, or if the red dot should fail, uh, I just flip these up real quick. On the 18 inch, because I'm running a, a scope, the idea was if this should fail or have some kind of issue, and I'm, I'm in a hurry and I, I don't want to get fumble around trying to get the scope off and it, it would be easier to pop these sights up and look around the scope and still be able to use the rifle so that was that was a thinking for the offsets on the uh, the LPVO versus the standard fold downs uh, for the aim point okay so both of them are using the uh, Aero Precision Atlas S1 handguards and Aero Precision upper and lowers I'm using four pound uh, Velocity triggers and Magpul Myad uh, hand guards, and these have the uh, optional back straps. They come with uh, two other back straps, and it has a removable compartment down here if you want to carry a spare bolt. Or uh, they come with a, they come with a little oil bottle so you can keep oil in here if you want. Um, Aero Precision buffer tubes and standard uh, Magpul SLs. So that kind of pretty much covers most of the rifle. Oh, I forgot to mention the uh, K&S anti-walks. Um, I've never heard anybody having a problem with the velocity triggers as far as their set screws coming loose or anything, but hey, why not? Put a little insurance on there just in case. So anyway, that's basically the rifle. So I think we'll get into the issues that I had with this uh, the last time I had it out. And this is only the second time that I've had these, these two rifles out. So we'll, we'll get into that discussion. 
Okay, so like we were talking about earlier, this has a rifle length gas system. And um, when I was buying parts for these two rifles, I grabbed two carbine buffers. Um, one of them was an H1 and one of them was a standard buffer. And I, I didn't realize that one of them was an H1 until I got home. Somebody had mixed up the, the buffers on the display. So I thought, well, if any of them is going to need an H1, it's probably going to be the 16 inch. So I stuck the H1 buffer in the 16 inch. And um, so anyway, while I was test firing this, I'd say about the first 10 rounds, the, the rifle functioned really well. And then after about 10 rounds, it, it started acting up a little bit. Um, it was having a feeding issue. It wouldn't pick up the next round off of the, the magazine. So the bolt carrier group uh, was starting to short cycle a little bit. And at first I'm thinking, man, I wonder if it is that, uh, the rifle length gas system on the carbine. So I was kind of annoyed with myself that I had gone with that, that system rather than more like a mid-length or even a carbine. And uh, so anyway, I, I put up with that for a little while and I ended up uh, swapping out buffers because this one had the standard buffer in it. So I took the buffer, standard buffer out of this and pulled the H1 out of this one and put the standard buffer in. And that solved the uh, the feeding issue, but it wouldn't hold open on the last round. So it was still short stroking a little bit. It was pretty much functioning about 90% now, but not, not quite there. So I pulled the, the bolt carrier group out of the rifle, uh, cleaned it up, took it all apart, relubed it, stuck it back in the rifle. And I didn't have any more problems for the rest of the day. The, the rifle functioned perfectly with the a standard buffer and getting things cleaned up. So I thought, well, maybe it's just a break-in issue. Okay, fast forward a little bit. I get home, I'm cleaning the rifles, and what I noticed was there was the bolt carrier group on this 16 inch wasn't sliding back and forth smoothly. I mean, it was, it was going back and forth. It wasn't like a huge amount of friction. It wasn't like really hanging out, but it wasn't going as easy as it should. So what I did was I took the bolt carrier group out of this rifle and stuck it into this rifle and I had the same problem. It was running tight. So then just to, to double check, I took the bolt carrier group from this one and stuck it in this one and it ran freely. So at that point, I knew it wasn't the bolt carrier group. There was something going on with the receiver and this particular receiver is just, it's tight. So um, it wasn't the gas system, wasn't necessarily the buffer, although it did run better with a lighter buffer because of the friction going on with the receiver. So anyway, we're out here today and um, I think the rifle is just gonna need some more break-in time to be 100% reliable. Um, you know, I think it's gonna be one of those ARs because it's it's the receiver is tight. Um, it's just gonna have to be kept clean until it gets really good and broke in. But the 18 inch ran flawless, um, everything's perfect. So, um, like I said, we're kind of out here today to just give this 16 inch a little bit more break in time and, and get things smoothed out. So anyway, let's get, let's get some shooting done here. Okay. So we're going to run this uh, 16 inch Franken gun first. The one that gave me a little bit of trouble last time I was out at first and then uh, started functioning pretty well. Um, aim point, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the patrol rifle optic, it's a uh, two MOA dot, so at 100 yards, the dot's going to cover up about two inches of your target. And at 50 yards, it's going to cover up one inch. So I got the target out at 50 yards, and uh, we'll see how we do with the red dot. But the primary reason I'm out here, might be kind of repeating myself, is to give this 16-inch uh, a little more break-in time and uh, see how well it does today. Okay, so I got three rounds, and uh, we'll see how they do. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to cycle okay and, and pick up a round. If we have any trouble today, it might be the uh, the hold open. But let's find out. As soon as I chamber around, <laughs> I always do this crap. All right, here we go. <laughs> Jeez. All right. And that red dot's uh, 
taking up quite a bit at the target at 50 yards. So we're not shooting for accuracy really, we're just doing a function check. See all the smoke coming off of there? That's, uh, I got a lot of oil in there. Probably should have cleaned it up a little bit before we fired. Okay, everything went well. No feeding issues. Bolt held open on the last round. So let's go down and see what we did on the target. Okay, man, even with a red dot at 50 yards, I know I can do better than that. So we're gonna go load up a few more rounds. See if I can uh, get it tightened up. Okay, I'm gonna fire three more rounds on a 16 inch. Try to tighten up the groups a little bit. Um, I, I have a little bit of astigmatism, so red dot's not exactly a dot, but we'll try to figure out where it's hitting. Okay. If nothing else, maybe I'll at least get a tighter group this time. It's not the rifle, it's me. All right, she held open again, so I think the uh, the initial uh, problems are solved. And I have now deemed this rifle reliable. Okay, so a much tighter group. Um, I think I'm gonna make some adjustments to it, pull it over. I'll do that off camera and then I'll show the results. And then I'm gonna switch over to the uh, LPVO. 18 inch rifle. Okay, so we're close enough for today. Uh, like I said, we're kind of close in 50 yards. So, expecting it to uh, shoot a little bit high. And like I said, I have astigmatism, so I'm not staring at like a perfectly round red dot. It's kind of fuzzy at this distance for me. So now we're gonna switch over to the 18 inch and the LPVO. Should be able to do much better with that one. Okay, we're on the 18 inch with the Steiner. Steiner, do it. Do it now. All right, she held open. Empty mag, empty chamber. Let's go down and see what the Steiner did. Okay, so that was the first round I fired and that's what I call a blow off round. That, that 18 inch was just soaking in oil. So I think that may have had something to do with it, either that or me jerking a trigger, but that was my last two shots. So, um, when I can actually see, and I got a good scope, and I've got a good barrel, Criterion, um, not too bad. So anyway, I'm probably just going to put some more rounds through the 16-inch uh, just to kind of give it a little bit more break-in time. Uh, the 18-inch is dialed in, so uh, I'll, do, I'll do that off camera. Um, basically, mission accomplished today. Pete, North Las Vegas, over and out.